In Diablo 4 Season 4, there are five major mistakes you want to make sure you're avoiding when running the pit because they can not only destroy your progress of your character, but make things take infinitely times longer than they need to. Through testing some of the PTR, some of these mistakes can cost you up to 50 plus hours just by not doing some of these things. So firstly, when running the pit, again, we're doing this so we can advance through tiers of the pit, get higher level rewards and more materials for our master working. Now, again, the pit works on a 10 minute timer and the faster you do this, the more efficient you're going to be in getting materials for upgrading your gear through master working. And again, the quicker you finish the pit, the higher tier skips you get for skipping tier pit levels. As a reminder, if you finish with more than six minutes left, on a level in the pit you actually skip up three pit levels so if you are on level one you'll now have unlocked all the way up to level four if you finish between four and six minutes you'll get an additional unlock meaning you'll unlock from level one all the way to level three so you'll go two levels up and if you finish anywhere below four minutes you'll just go straight up to the next level meaning from level one to level two now those are the basics of the pit now here are the main mistakes you don't want to make so the first is you need to be kiting enemies and early on in your character's progression this may be easier said than done but by the time you hit level 100 you should be able to kite and mob train enemies because it gives you the quickest possible time so ideally there's a bar in the pit that you have to kill a certain amount of enemies in order to unlock the rift that actually takes you to the mini boss that allows you to complete that level of the pit itself you need to make sure you're not just fighting one small group at a time you need to make sure you're primarily targeting the elites while also dragging in a bunch of the trash or junk mobs in as you continue to play so maybe you need to attack and bring two or three groups of small trash mobs in together and then go ahead and clear them out all in one fell swoop so you're not stopping and clearing out each individual group over and over and over again this is going to cost you not only a lot of time for actually skipping through levels of the pit but it's going to make your pit runs longer and by making your pit runs one minute longer per pit run if it takes you five minutes to do a pit run instead of four minutes that one minute over time is going to add up, making you 20% less effective, and it means it's going to take you 20% the amount of time to actually upgrade all of your gear, meaning doing some of this stuff can actually save you a lot of time in the long run. Again, by doing this, you want to focus on the elites because there are plenty of elites in the pit dungeons. So by kind of running through the trash mobs and getting to the elites, you're essentially fighting the elite and pulling all the trash mobs in at the same time. By the time you're done fighting the elite, you've pretty much killed all the trash mobs around. So that should be your main focus. So that way you can kill as many enemies as quickly as possible, because the faster you kill these enemies in big groups, the faster you go through the pit, the faster you complete upgrading your gear and just become more powerful this way. Now that's the first way you officially want to attack the pit. Now another efficiency tip and mistake you can make that can cost you a lot of time. Again, overall just being efficient based on the level of pit that you're doing. So eventually it will get much more difficult to actually run the pit as you get higher and higher levels. For instance, if you're running through tier 20 of the pit perfectly fine and it's only taking you three or four minutes to run through that, once you get to let's say tier 50 and you continue to do that, let's say it takes nine minutes to run through the pit. That might not be the most efficient way because if you continue to run level 50 over and over and over again to get those higher level materials, it's going to cost you over double the time, not including deaths and not including everything you actually mess up and don't get anything for. But your reward ratio at that point for efficiency is pretty much out of the window. So as you continue to do more difficult pit levels, you can eventually hit a wall where it's not worth doing anymore from PTR testing in season four. The best ratio, in my opinion, is being around five minutes if you're doing a higher difficulty level pit run. For instance, doing easier pit runs that you can easily complete in three, four minutes is very efficient. Doing a higher level one that takes five, maybe six minutes is the max I would give it for actually being efficient and getting materials. If it's taking you longer than around five minutes to complete, what that means is at that point, you're wasting a lot of time. And what you need to really focus on is doing the more efficient levels of the pit so you can get the materials you need to upgrade all of your pieces of gear and master work it to the max level you can get it to with that pit tier level. So that way you can become more powerful. And by the time you go back and start attempting those higher level or more difficult pit challenges, you'll be running through them much more quicker at probably that three to four minute range. You can then continue to advance through the pit levels at that point, and it will be much smoother. You won't run into as many failed attempts. And again, you might get stuck later on at the higher level of the pit. And again, you'll do the same thing and continue to max out your gear at more efficient pit levels. Again, timing your runs for that four to six minute range is really important because if it takes you longer than that, 
you might need to jump back down a little bit and continue upgrading your gear until you can efficiently run them. Another thing to pay attention to is pit materials change as you go through the tiers. Levels 1 through 20, for instance, will give you the lowest level. Levels 20 through 40 will give you the next level material and so on and so forth. Now, one mistake I already know people are going to make when it comes to the pit is they're going to say, you know what? I've gotten through 20 levels of the pit and I've upgraded two of my pieces of gear to level four. You should try and get them all to level four as quickly as possible. But I've only gotten two pieces of gear via masterworking to level four. What do I do now? Because now I'm running tier 30 of the pit and I'm getting the higher level materials for actually masterworking my gear from levels four to eight. But a lot of my gear is masterworking level zero and I need the lower level material to actually upgrade my gear. Well, with season four and master working, they actually implemented a very important feature, and that's that you can continue to do higher levels of the pit, get higher level material rewards that's used for those higher level upgrades in master working, and actually go to the alchemist and turn those in for much more lower level materials. So it makes sense if you're running higher pit levels to go ahead and continue to do that if you're running them efficiently, because you get the higher level materials and you can just simply trade them down for the lower level materials. That way you can continue to upgrade all of your stuff to level four. And then once you get everything to level four, you can continue running the pit and then using the new materials you're getting from the higher levels to upgrade your gear from that point. Again, if you get to the next material after that and you need to go back and do the same thing, you can do the exact same thing for all the materials and essentially downgrade them to the previous version, allowing you to not have to go back and run pit tier level 10 over and over and over again, because who wants to do that? Now, this is a big thing to keep in mind because a lot of you are going to be playing in groups and you can actually screw this up and mess up some of your progress this way. Running the pit in groups is different than running solo and what i mean by that is yes you're going to be running the pit at a much faster pace but keep in mind the materials you get are actually decreased so the person that opens up the pit with the rune shard not just necessarily the leader of the group but again the person that opens up the pit with the rune shard itself once that pit level is completed they get 100 percent of the actual master working materials that they get for completing that level. Everybody else in the party gets only 50% of those. So it may not necessarily be worth it. If you can efficiently run pit levels, it might not be worth it to run it in a group right away because you only get 50% of those materials. If you're running it in a group at four minutes and you're running it solo in four minutes, well, you're just running the pit levels for half the rewards. That doesn't make any sense. So unless you're running higher level pits that you need help to complete, it makes sense to do them solo for the most part, especially early on, unless you're again, the leader of that group. Again, unless you're the one who's spinning the rune charts to actually open the pit up itself, which then you probably will run it faster. So it would make it more beneficial for you if you're opening them yourself. Another thing to mention, the uber unique boss drops that you're going to be getting from some of these torment echo level bosses, etc., will require Stygian stones. And those are actually dropped from levels of the pit. And in order to get those, they're rewards from the pit levels themselves. So only the person that actually opens up that pit level with the rune shard will get the reward of those stingy and stones that actually are used to summon these bosses that people do run over and over and over again to try and get the uber unique drops. So keep that in mind that you'll be missing out on a lot of those actual boss mats by running these pit levels in a group since every other party member besides the person that opened it won't get any of them. So keep this in mind because if you actually are playing with a group, you all get max rewards by running them solo. You also all get the boss mats by running them solo as well. So if you're playing with a group of four friends and you all run these solo, you all get the boss mats through running the pit by yourself, meaning you can summon essentially almost four times the amount of bosses with the stone rewards that you get meaning you can get much more chances at uber unique drops by running those bosses at that point together. So keep that in mind. You can get a lot more boss fights out of the stones themselves if they're actually that valuable or that rare, assuming they actually end up being the bottleneck at which these bosses need to be summoned, which may or may not happen. And finally, the biggest tip I can give you about the pit that you need to be focusing on is your movement speed. So this may mean that you have pieces of gear that you use specifically and only for the pit because they are maxed out on movement speed. Because you go up levels of the pit based on how quickly you complete the levels, again, the amount of speed that you actually clear these with also makes a huge difference because the obviously the quicker you complete them, the more materials you get, the faster you upgrade, etc. So having movement speed on some extra pieces of gear, even if you use that piece of gear just for the pit, is extremely important. 
For instance, let's say we have a set of boots that we have movement speed on that has a greater affix of movement speed. Let's say we get plus 27% movement speed. Let's say we've masterworked that pair of boots and that pair of boots is giving us plus, I don't know, let's say plus 40% movement speed or something crazy, right? And then let's say we have an amulet that gives us movement speed that also gives us plus 60 or plus 70% movement speed because we've gotten lucky on our master working and it's just insane. Let's say with aspects on our boots and stuff, we also get movement speed bonuses and say we're moving at 200% movement speed across the pit. We're able to complete them at record time destroy everything in our path and we're able to upgrade our character and get mats for even maybe other characters at insane speeds so keep that in mind you may need gear specifically for movement speed and it may make you a pit master and overall help you level up not just one character but all of your characters much much quicker that being said those are all the big things about the pit and mistakes you don't want to make if the video helped you drop a like on the video and subscribe guys if you're new more season 4 content for diablo 4 coming very soon thank you